Now, what we're going to do is start with an introduction to meshes, make sure that we have a lot of the groundwork laid out um, to build a really strong foundation from, uh, from which to move forward with. Meshes are a really interesting type of geometry that are defined as a set of points. Um, when we're talking about points in geometry, they're referred to as vertices. And those vertices are arranged into basic elements called faces. Here on the left, you can see a mesh quad, and on the right, a mesh tri. The quad is composed, uh, the quad and the tri, are composed of vertices, which we can see in white, and a face at the center, and edges. Here along the outer perimeter, we can see that there are edges um, shared only by one face. And in the inner, um, you can see an edge which is shared by two faces, the tri and the quad. A mesh can um, be composed of only one face. And on the right, you can see the same mesh composed of multiple faces. Let's bounce over to Rhino really quick and take a look at what that, um, what that looks like. Now, from the mesh toolbar uh, here at the, the mesh file dropdown, we can see we have options for a polygon mesh primitive, one of which would be a plane. You can also get to that by going to the mesh tools pullout. I'm going to be using uh, the file browser, uh, the menus for pretty much everything. So I'll go to polygon mesh primitives and I'm going to click on plane. It asks you for the first corner of a rectangle and how many faces you would like. So let's give that a shot really quick. I'm just dragging out. I might type something in four by four. And you can see that here I have a single mesh with one face. I'm going to repeat that command one more time. Mesh, polygon mesh primitives, and plane. And draw another one out to the side. But before I do that, I'm going to go ahead and make sure that I change the face count. Three by three. I'll repeat the mesh command now. So we still have one mesh, but you can see we have more faces now. Well, the information describing these basic elements are the mesh connectivity and the mesh geometry. The mesh quad and the mesh tri, as we saw in the previous slide, are really composed of the vertices in a particular order. So below mesh quad, you'll see that there's Q, four colon, semicolon, one, three, six. That indicates the order, four, one, three, six, that the vertices are inputted in order to construct Q, which represents quad. Here on the right, mesh tri, two, four, six, and a T indicating that this is a tri element. So that mesh connectivity, you may have heard the term topology before, really describes the incidence relations among mesh elements. For example, adjacent vertices and edges of a face. So here on the right, you can see that we have a collection right, of faces composing one single mesh. On the left, we have a list of vertices, and on the right, commands. And these commands are really indicating what type of, uh, what type of element will actually be created. Let's take a look at E, for example. We have 6, 10, 9, and 5. If we look over here at E, we have 5, 6, 10, and 9. So the order that it was, um, the, I guess the index that it began with was 5, but it's still moving in this counterclockwise orientation. 5 is just the index of the corresponding point, which will be used as a mesh vertex. So these are really just um, point coordinates. The 5 is the index, and this face command um, is what's used to construct the basic elements of the mesh. 
Now, when we talk about mesh topology, another thing that's really quite interesting is the fact that here on the left, you can see this um, triangulated uh, mesh strip. And on the right, uh, triangulated mesh strip with deformations that have taken place. Now, because a mesh really uh, is nothing more than a connectivity network or a kind of lattice of connectivity, right? The changes that occur on the right are really just visual. We're not changing the topology of the, um, of the mesh. Uh, that won't actually happen unless we remove a vertex, an edge, or a face from the mesh. Well, that's very different than a surface, for instance, and we'll get to that in just a little bit. So some important things to note about meshes are that they are defined as a set of points arranged into basic elements called faces. Mesh properties include faces, edges, vertices, and the topology is really the connectivity of all those things. Now, meshes can be used to generate faceted geometry. These are also referred to as primitives that define built elements or approximate curvature when coupled with something like Weaver bird subdivision modeling uh, capabilities. So let's take a look. Let's, let's see how in Grasshopper we might be able to take advantage of some of um, the elements uh, and basic uh, composition uh, techniques of a mesh. So I'm going to open up Grasshopper once again. I'm going to split my screen. I'm just going to delete these two elements that I made. From File, Open. I'm going to open up 1-0 Introduction to Meshes. Now, you can see in the files that we've distributed um, today, um, everything will be annotated for you. This is hopefully going to help um, to uh, expedite uh, kind of learning and, and be able to make this very easy for you to come back to and, and continue to learn from after the webinar. And wherever we can, we take advantage of as much visual information being communicated um, back at the viewport in Rhino um, to really make this um, a kind of dynamic uh, file for you. Now, zooming in over here, if we just take a look at what this file is, is producing, we can see that we have here a mesh plane. The inputs for faces, width, and height are similar to what we did in Rhino. So I could change this, right, in, increasing the number of faces and the width, or increase or decrease this for the faces and the height, right? When we specify the dimension of the plane, I could use a slider to be able to change how big the mesh is. And over here, mesh vertex indices, we're using our point list display, which is a great tool, <clears throat> to indicate the position of the list of vertices that are used to construct these basic elements. Now, if we go right down here to the face commands, let's turn the preview on of this um, component. Now, I'm going to go to wireframe view. I can zoom in and note that here's that queue that we looked at in the PowerPoint, a quad composed of 0, 1, 5, 4, 0, 1, 5, 4. So this basic element, which is a quad, right, is made up of these vertices, 0, 1, 5, 4, from the list of all the vertices that make up the mesh. So let's take a look at how we can do that. I'm going to go ahead and...